Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching the classes of inorganic chemistry. See here, in our last lectures of the bio and organic chemistry, we have seen several other topics like hemoglobin, hemocyanin, hemerythrin. Okay, but some of the topics are remaining. So now we have started to go on through these topics okay so first of all we will see this very important topic that is iron sulfur protein okay that is peridoxin and probridoxin actually iron sulfur proteins means these are the proteins that contains iron and sulfur okay as from the name you can understand these proteins are of two types one that are involved in the electron transfer reaction and the another type is that are used as catalyst. The examples of these catalyst iron sulfur proteins are hydrogenase, nitrogenase, sulfide reductase. The electron transfer proteins are basically two that are peridoxin and rubridoxin. Actually, in these two proteins, there are the non heme type of iron. One thing you should remember that there is non-heme type of iron, okay? And this iron is attached to two types of sulfur atoms. One sulfur atom is from the inorganic sulfide. This is shown in abbreviation. And the second type is the sulfur atom of cysteine residue. So basically there are two types of sulfur atoms. One is inorganic sulfides. These are general sulfur atoms. And the another one is the sulfur atom of the cysteine residues to which the iron is attached. But if we see the abbreviations of these, it means we see the symbols of peridoxin, rubridoxin, then in that symbol only this inorganic sulfide is shown. Okay. Now see first of all the rubridoxin type of the iron sulfur protein. Actually it is the simplest type of iron sulfur protein that is found in bacteria. We can abbreviate it as Fe1S0 or we can write it 1Fe0S protein. Now what is the meaning of this 0S or S0? It means there is no inorganic sulfide. It has only one single iron atom and this iron atom is tetrahedrally arranged. Tetrahedrally arranged means this is the iron atom and this has the tetrahedral coordination around it. Okay, it means this is attached to four sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues. These are the four sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues which are attached to it in this manner. Okay, but there is no inorganic sulfide present. Okay, so this protein we can call single tetrathiolate protein. And one thing you should remember that there is no inorganic sulfur or we can call no acid labile sulfur. Acid labile sulfur means there is no sulfur atoms which can be removed with the help of acid. Okay. Now see what is its physiological role. Actually the physiological role of rubridoxin is not always known with the certainty. But some of the rubridoxins participate in the omega hydroxylation of fatty acids. In this rubridoxin, one thing you should remember that iron is present in plus 3 oxidation state and it is an electron transfer protein. So this will shuttle between two oxidation states. It means when it is in the oxidized state, okay, when it is in the oxidized state, then the iron is present in plus 3 oxidation state. And when it is present in the reduced state, the iron is present in plus 2 oxidation state. Now the second type of the iron sulfur protein is peridoxin. Peridoxin may be of three types. One is called 2-Fe 2-S protein. Okay. The second one is 3-Fe 4-S protein. And the third one is 4-Fe 4-S protein. And this one is the most common type of the protein. Now one thing you should remember that we can recognize the peridoxin from rubridoxin by this thing that there is this acid labile sulfur. You can see this is 2S, 4S, 4S. This all is called inorganic sulfur or acid labile sulfur. 
you have seen that in the rupee toxin there was no acid levide sulfides or no inorganic sulfides but in the case of peridoxin there is inorganic sulfide present okay first of all see the two fe2s or fe2s2 types of the peridoxins these are highly acidic proteins okay and in these proteins you can see there are two iron atoms two iron centers are present and both the iron centers are tetrahedrally arranged it means the geometry around these irons is tetrahedral okay so these are tetrahedrally arranged now one thing you should remember that these two irons are bridged together by the sulfur bridges okay it means there is a sulfur bridge like this two sulfur atoms are present as a bridge between these two iron atoms now one thing you should remember that this iron is tetrahedrally arranged it means it should have four coordinated so the two other coordination of it is completed by the sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues it means at the two sides of these iron atoms there are cysteine residues present and at the two sides there are inorganic sulfurs okay it means these are these are the inorganic sulfurs okay this we can call inorganic sulfurs yeah inorganic sulfides and these are the sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues okay now see its redox condition redox states there are two redox states of fe2s2 proteins one is fe third fe third state okay one is fe third fe third state okay and the second one is fe third fe second state the peridoxin is settling between these two states okay this is the oxidized stage and this is the reduced state in the oxidized state the two iron atoms are anti ferromagnetically coupled okay these fe2s2 types of proteins were also known as the plant proteins these are also called plants peridoxin so if you have given a statement that this is a plant peridoxin yes it is a plant peridoxin because firstly it was found in the spinach a one very important type of the fe2s2 protein is called risk a protein this was firstly isolated from mitochondria if you see its structure in this structure there is one thing different see here these are the inorganic sulfides that are present between these iron atoms and at the one of the iron atom there are cysteine residues okay the sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues are attached but at the second side there is the nitrogen atoms of the cysteine residues okay in this manner this is the imidazole group of the cysteine residues that are attached okay so this is the structure of the risk a protein the second type of the peridoxin is 3 fe4s or fe3s4 type of the peridoxin it means in this type there are three iron centers okay and there are four inorganic sulfides this was firstly find in the nitrogen fixing bacterium azobacter vinerali the fe3s4 cluster has apofe thiocubane structure it means this will have this type of structure see here this is the iron okay three irons are arranged in this manner okay in between them there are these are inorganic sulfide groups okay these are present and in between them there is this type of the inorganic sulfide right and the three iron atoms are also attached to the sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues so this type of structure is called apothiocubane type of structure okay now if you see its oxidation state its redox form the three irons are in plus 3 oxidation state in oxidized form okay 
this is the oxidized form this can take one electron and it can go to fe3 s4 at zero oxidation state the oxidized state contains all the fe plus 3 iron atoms okay but in the reduced form one of the iron atom is in plus 2 oxidation state and other two are in plus 3 oxidation state right the third type of the pyridoxine is 4Fe4S type or Fe4S4 pyridoxine. This participates in several electron transfer reactions in bacteria and this is the most common type of pyridoxine. Okay, this will have thiocubane structure. In thiocubane structure, if you say the iron atoms are present at the alternate corners of the cube. Okay, see here like this. This I am making a cube. Okay, and the and at the alternate corners, you can see these are the iron atoms present in this manner. And at the iron atoms, there are sulfur atoms of the cysteine residues. Okay, one of the sulfur atom of the cysteine residue is attached to each of the iron center. And at the next corners of the cube, there are inorganic sulfurs present. Okay, now see its redox state. If you see its redox state, the oxidized state will have 2 Fe third and 2 Fe second. Okay, this is in the oxidized form. The reduced form will have 3 Fe second and 1 Fe third. Okay, this is present in the reduced form. So, if we see its redox condition, see here, Fe4, S4 plus 3 will take an electron in the electron transfer reaction and it will form Fe4, S4 plus 2. It can further take an electron and it can go to Fe4, S4 plus state. It means it is shuttling between the three oxidation states, okay, this one, this one and this one. The active side of the oxidized form has a ground state S is equal to 0 and it is EPR silent. And when fully reduced, the proteins have a ground state S is equal to half and gives a typical EPR spectra. Okay, it means the fully reduced form is EPR active, but the oxidized form is EPR silent. Okay, so this is all about the rubridoxin and pyridoxin. Okay, so I hope you will like this video and if you have not seen my previous lectures of the bio and organic chemistry, you can see our playlist of bio and organic chemistry meets you with some other videos and if you want some more topics, you can comment me. You can find every type of video on my channel. Okay, so please subscribe the channel and share these videos with other students. Thank you.